we're going to cape this guy, so we're going to start here mid brisket, right under the armpit, and we make an incision all the way through around the one side of the genitals, back all the way to the anus, and that's your split to split him off. And we'll cape him right about midsection, give the taxidermist plenty of work with. And you split them like this, all the way up to the spine, stop at the spine. This little knife works great for that. And we start right back here, come up to the armpit. Work up the leg, go around the leg. So we've taken the hide off the front part of the leg and what I like to do down here is the cape splits to the spine. The spine is right here and you make a little slit right there and go beyond the other direction too so that you know where to come to when you do the other side and then when you come down the top of the back of the neck right there you know where to bring that to. But you can kind of see where that hair splits apart leads right back to where we're headed and um, so you kind of want to just try to stay in the center and do your best to keep it straight I usually start right up here at the back of the pole of the head and this little knife I've got sharpened up to poke a hole in him right there it takes yeah. a little bit because boy they got a thick hide back here Okay, now we're out of the thick stuff, so if you can get down here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. When you, when you put your knife back in, just make sure you start it right in the V again, so you're not cutting a whole bunch of different angles. And you just make sure you start right back in the same spot right there, and it'll zip right out to our other slit right there. Sometimes pulling on it on this side helps. Find that little slit right there and pop it. We'll unhook him there and we'll move it to the back end. And you want to situate it to where your the head is more going to be centered over where it's pulling from. So I kind of like to go forward a little bit and test it out, see where it's at. Wrap it around the uh, foot right there so that you can skin and get rid of the scent gland. And so pull it up tight, make sure we're good and stable here. Nothing's going to come flying, flopping around on you. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You can kind of hold the rope to the side there, and now we can skin this whole back end out. So what we do there, when we skin this back leg, um, I like to come right up from the center here, where the hide's kind of thin, and go right up the inside, up above the gland here. You want to get that off with the hide. Get it around here. Land right here it's in the pocket of that flank that you want to take off with the hide and it's really jelly loose stuff there the sinew and you want to try to get that peeled out of that corner so now to get that leg back you know it's kind of tucked in there what I like to do is take the leg and just kick it back like this here's this one up and peel it right out of there want the meat to be touching the ground so you don't want the hide to be all rolled up underneath there. Just lay it out nice. Try to keep everything clean. Play around underneath there. Go as under as far as you can. And you'll see the tail right there. Just stop right there. So 
will hook it around just below the hawk. And extend the tripod up fairly tall right at this point. And it's kicked back real tight right in the crotch. You'll see the penis right here runs underneath, right through the crotch, and it goes right up between the butt. And so you want to kind of split that open like that. You can kind of see how it separates. You're not cutting into any meat. And then you want to separate this sinew out right around the flank. And just kind of be careful because this is guts right here. You don't want to poke into that, so keep your knife away from that. And right here, you see how tight it is. You just go ahead and cut right into that meat right there until you get down to this to the uh, pelvis big tendon right here pop through that keep working your way down be careful of that gut just kind of work your way through that down to the pelvis use the leg right there to, to keep it held out <clears throat> when you're by yourself you know you don't have anybody to do that and it takes a little bit more time maybe maybe more than what you guys are used to and then you find that hip socket, which is right up underneath there. And so when you start opening this up, this comes back right here to the point of the hip. There's a point right there, you can feel it. <clears throat> That's the top part of the hip. And so there's another main artery right here. I just cut through it, you see that? <clears throat> You'll see a really tendony looking piece of meat right here. That baby's your inside tenderloin. So you wanna try to manipulate that open kind of open that up right there because you don't want to cut through it right there you want part of that to stay with as the inside tenderloin so you just got to kind of find it like that and open it up and not cut that off right here and you start working back on the hip back and you'll feel the point of that hip stay on the back side of it and start cutting down through them Feel the hip right there. And there's a piece of meat right there that will come away from the inside loin. And you see what I'm doing there? That's your inside tenderloin. Again, you don't want to cut through it right there yet. So follow the hip at this point. Cut right straight down through here, right straight down through the back strap to the other point of the hip, which is underneath there just running your knife against that hip. There is some holes in there that go into the gut. So make sure you're not running your knife po poking it like that. Just keep it kind of parallel with the hip. Manipulate the pot again. Kind of back up and keep it out like that. And I'll work around toward the butt. When you start cutting through here, you'll find the, the back butt point of the hip is right back here and just stay on the outside of that just stay as close as you can to the hip this other point is you have to cut back in don't keep going that way you're just going to go right into your quarter cut back in and keep working around and really expose that socket now right there little tendon right on the ball of the socket you gotta cut that you'll see it keep working around that socket the hip bone is shaped right like that you see that so there's a socket right there and now is where I like to lay it back down this way side let that baby come back down this direction until it'll want to hold maybe position the leg back here so it doesn't fall over on you. Kick this one out a little bit. Now we're really laid open. Right. Keep following that hip up around the back side through there. Now getting back to the inside loin, there's a chunk of meat right in there that it connects right up in here. And you want to try to stay up here as high as you can and just cut through the whole thing right there. Up a little bit further and follow that hip line down and you'll see these big tendons right here when you when you pop those be careful because that thing's gonna come flying off it's still attached but it might really pull off of there so just kind of 
make sure you're pulled up back here with your hide. You can come down here. This is where those little pockets are to get into the gut. This this hole right here, that's guts right there. Be careful when you cut through that stuff. Just kind of stay in that same plane of the hip. You see how it peels right off. Come down here and just keep cutting that off. And when you get back here to a certain point, you can leave it attached. Now pull up on this thing and we'll stand it up a little taller. And we'll grab hold here and we'll pull up on it as high as we can. Sometimes you can get it higher by standing it up. See how I did that? Just go ahead and cut right through here. Let's stand this back up a little. And now we're freed up. You see how I just made that cut? We're free from the carcass. And now we can hold it up there. And now she's hanging there. Make sure it's good and solid. Doesn't feel like it's going to tip over on you. And leave it right there. I like to let it cool off a little bit if it's warm out, if it's cold, wintertime, whatever. Wrap her up, package it up. We'll let it hang there for just a minute and take a break. We got shade coming, so we're good. Come back to the front leg, and now we hook it right above the knee. We're up tight. What I like to do is come in from the brisket right here and you split his brisket open like this. As you see this brisket meat right here, it's about an inch and a half thick on an elk. There's a ton of rib meat in here that you can pull with this. A lot of people, they, they like to just cut right through here and they leave this meat right here. And you're, I mean, if, yeah, if you don't want to backpack it out, that's fine, but you're wasting a lot of hamburgers right there. I like hamburger. But this is the way we do it here. Start peeling that brisket off. You can leave the fat on it. You can peel the fat off. You do whatever you like. And you'll see when you open that up, you'll start to get back to the ribs here. And you'll see that chunk of meat that you're peeling off of there. There's about 10 hamburgers right in there. I like to kind of pick the hair off as I go, but come back here where you just kind of see things in and just kind of start peeling up. Be careful back at the end of the rib cage. You can feel the last rib is about right here. It comes in and ties into the back of the sternum here. So just kind of peel that off. And you get to a point where you can cut in here. There's a bunch more meat that you're going to cut into. You want to get underneath that. And peel it back like that with your knife. And you see the ribs starting to show up. See this rib meat coming off of here. It's really thick. You want to keep all that. I like to come in from that way because if you come in from this way you're going to miss a little bit of it. Like this you kind of start peeling in and you see how it just leaves it on there. When you get under it it comes right off of there. And you get down to the throat and you can take this throat meat with the whole front quarter if you want and peel this this is all good grind meat. You see that slab of meat right there? It's all good grind meat right there. Clean it up, grind her up. see there's a kind of a bone, a brisket bone comes up right here and you want to try to hit that and take a lot of this neck meat with it. I like to kind of go right around that jugular because I don't like a whole bunch of blood flowing out here yet. You just kind of keep cutting in there and you can feel the 
the neck. So find a separation of meat right there and just kind of separate some of that neck meat off with the front shoulder. Coming back in here, still continue to get this rib meat peeled off. You see what I'm doing there? People who keep the ribs separately and cut them up, you're going to want to leave that on there and cut it here. And leave that attached if you're taking the rib cage with you. We're not going to take the rib cage on this animal. So we're going to take as much as we can with the front quarter. And pretty soon you're going to be able to hoist it up again. Allows you to get in there a lot further. Still continue to cut some of that rib meat off. Now you can see where I've cut all the rib meat off. And now this is the front of the back strap coming in here and attaching here. So you don't want to get cutting into that. To find that meat separation, there's a nice separation that goes right through here. You can take a lot of that outer meat of the neck, the neck roast, and take it with the front quarter. The top is going to come off pretty close to the ground. So you got to kind of be careful when you pull that off. What I like to do, lay the pod back down and kind of keep it. See how I just stretched that out with that leg? Now it's all stretched out tight this direction. And just follow that spine right around and just make the separation of the shoulder blade there. The shoulder blade ends right at the top right here. And so you want to make that separation down here as far as you can. And just kind of let that be pulled taut like that and uh, you won't have any trouble with it dragging in the dirt down here. Hold it tight, make some more cuts. See how tight we're pulled right here. This whole thing's just hanging by a thread. You just want to kind of work your way back around and separate it off. And now we're pretty much free from it right there. So now we're going to take the back strap off. And of course, you know where all that lays right in here. So what I like to do first, there's a, there's a kind of a layer right here of fat and sinew that you don't necessarily need to leave that on there. I like to kind of peel that away and it'll expose kind of a line down here that we can go by. If you stick your finger in here, you know, six, eight inches kind of in line with the hip, there's kind of a separation there that you can follow. You just got to be careful because there's gut lining right there. And so just kind of keep cutting that away and you'll see this little separation right here but what I like to do is kind of cut some of this you can see how it peels right off of there I just kind of like to get rid of that now there's a little separation here you can see that right there that's where you want to kind of gently go in there and you see these points of these ribs are right here. There's five short ribs that are between the back rib, which is right here, and the hip. You find that separation on the outside of the ribs. You get way back into that point to get all that meat out of that hip. And now you see where I got up to the first back rib here, they come off real easy up here. And so get, go all the way down to the, 
to the spine, just lay your knife against those hips like that, or those ribs, and lay it against there, and just cut all the way down to the spine. You can't really go into the guts at all here unless you're going in with your knife like that. So just and peel it off the hip. Finish peeling it off the hip. You can get right up in that point in there. Separate it off. Come down here. Really thick tendon right there. You got to cut through and get all the way into get that whole thing out of there. So what I do is just take your rope and wrap it around and hook it. Pull up on it a little bit. And so now I like to take the rest of this neck roast with the back strap. So whatever didn't come off with the front quarter, you can sure take with this back strap. So now everybody's big question is, well, how do you get the inside tenderloin out? And the inside tenderloin lays right in here underneath these same five ribs between the hip and the back of the rib cage. And it, it's, it's in a, a little pocket right in here that's outside of the gut lining, but inside this, this spine of ribs right here. That's where it lays. It's, this is part of it right here. And so that little chunk lays right up in alongside here, and it comes to a little point right up here at the last rib. So we'll take that out later and I'll show you how I'm going to do that using the tripod later. What, we, what we've done here now is made an incision up this inside thigh before we rolled it over. This testicle right here will stay attached to the inside thigh and you, you, make, a, you make a cut right through here and you separate the penis away from it. There'll still be a, a, a leave a piece of this sinew attached way up in there. It'll be way up in there when you get rolling on it. It'll be up in there. And, but right now, the whole sack, we don't want to keep any hide on here because this is all kind of tainted stuff, if you will. And so I'm just, I'm just going to make an incision right here and leave the sack and the penis and this whole belly with the carcass. So you make an, a cut through the hide back here on the other side of the penis and go up the underside of the belly and that whole area of, of nastiness will be stuck to the belly. Here we are, we have the tripod hooked onto the hip back here, and it's kind of pulled the hip up off the ground here, so we're up a little bit higher than, than working right on the ground, and you can get it up there quite a ways and put pretty good pressure on it. What this does is all the guts go to the front of the cavity. You know, sometimes just poking them down here below will relieve some of that bloating. And so you want to use a different knife after you've poked them in the guts, of course, or clean it. You start right here, there's, there's five short ribs that come off past this last rib of the rib cage. And so right at those tips of those ribs is where you want to start a little cut. You can kind of see it right there, it breaks away. Right there, it kind of breaks away. So start cutting that, and you see how that separates? All right. And you go back up under here. You can relieve the flank away from the hip. You see how that just kind of peels away? I don't even have to cut it. And now we, we just kind of peel that down and open up that cavity that, that the inside loin is laying right there. That's part of it. The rest of it's sticking out the back back here where we detached it from the rear quarter. And so you, you can start right back here and peel it off of the, the back part of the hip and it'll start coming out this way. And so the point of doing a no-gut procedure like this is to not expose any of your meat to any of that um, guts or anything, and especially the inside loins, because the only other way to get the inside loin out is to gut it, and they're laying right there, and usually, if you're not real good at gutting, um, or don't do it that often, you can really get to some tainted meat because you'll, you'll, you get the urine sac poked or anything down in there, 
gets all over that meat, forget about it. Back to the, the objective here, there's some tendons here that you can see. And you just got to cut those. Just kind of pull them out and cut them. And that, that'll kind of relieve that. That's what's holding the gut lining to the spine. And so that kind of relieves a little bit more pressure. And you can kind of come in there and separate that lining out just with your hands. You separate that all the way up to the spine and don't worry about it you're not going to poke through that with your fingers unless there's a hole in it already there's another tendon you can feel them just kind of separate that you can see where the meat kind of comes out here and attaches kind of attaches to some sinew on the back of the rib just go ahead and cut through it right there there's not anything there and so now you're right at the point of where you're going to be pulling that loin out you can cut that right up to that last rib just kind of remove that just watch your tip right there because the guts are right there all right and so now we're, we're freed up on the underside now we want to free it up from these ribs the, the meat is actually stuck to the ribs on the underside of these short ribs right here and so you just come in here keep your knife at the right angle and you can you can start to separate some of this stuff out and uh, just always keeping your knife kind of flat toward the, the spine. And you'll be able to separate that off of those ribs. Just cut right down to the spine and it'll peel right off of there. Okay. Right. And you'll be able to slide your hand in there, get this last one. Right there, cut all the way into the spine, Push them, pushing in on those guts, it's fine, you're not wrecking anything there. And then just kind of go up in there with the tip of your knife and be careful of your fingers, but start separating that. Just kind of peel it away by hand almost. You can almost get to the point where you can kind of separate it off of there by hand. When you get up to the front right mm -hmm. here, it's still kind of attached right there. You just pull on it and it'll come off. And there you have it. Nice piece of inside tenderloin. That's your filet mignon on a beef. It is, you make a sous vide out of that. Oh boy, now we're talking. You do sous vide, sous vide, whatever you want to call it. Mm.